It's one small step for man, one giant leap for private enterprise. The United States has returned to the moon for the first time in more than 50 years. But on this occasion, it wasn't the American taxpayer footing the bill. The Odysseus lander touched down on the lunar surface a few hours ago, the first time a privately owned spacecraft has achieved that feat. Our science editor, Rebecca Morell, now reports. We've reached the expected time of landing, but now is the process of waiting for comms and we are in standby mode. A tense time at Intuitive Machines Mission Control as the team waits for their lunar lander to call home. We are checking our antenna reception. Still nothing as the minutes pass, but then, finally, a faint signal. We can confirm, without a doubt, as our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So, congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. Congratulations to everyone involved in this great and daring quest at Intuitive Machines, SpaceX, and right here at NASA. What a triumph. This feat is a giant leap forward for all of humanity. The Intuitive Machines team now needs to check the condition of the spacecraft and the status of what's on board. NASA has paid the company to carry six of its scientific instruments. It's the first ever commercial lander to reach the lunar surface and marks a return there for America. It's been more than 50 years since the United States landed on the moon. The last time was in 1972, and this is where Apollo 17 set down. Before that, there were five other Apollo missions that made it down to the lunar surface, and they were all around the moon's equator. But now the United States is heading down to the South Pole. And this is the landing site of the new Intuitive Machines mission. It's the furthest south a spacecraft has ever been, and it's paving the way for NASA's Artemis astronauts, who will be exploring the same polar region in a few years' time. So why go here? The area is covered in deep craters, some permanently in shadow, and scientists think frozen water could be inside. If we can actually uh, take advantage of that ice on the surface of the moon, that's less materials we have to bring with us. We can use that ice to convert it to water, drinkable drinking water. We can extract oxygen and hydrogen uh, for fuel and for uh, breathing for the astronauts. So it really helps us uh, in human exploration. Now the spacecraft is down, the team will carefully analyse any data and wait for the first images to arrive. They'll be hoping that the lunar exploration can then begin. Rebecca Morrell, BBC News. Earlier we spoke to former NASA astronaut Lee Roy Chow. He told us about the significance of the mission. This is the first time the U.S. has sent a probe of any kind back to the moon in over 50 years. And it's very much the first time that a commercial enterprise has successfully soft landed on the moon. Recently, there have been a few attempts that have failed. Even some nations have failed. And so this is a big, big deal. This is a natural evolution. You know, governments started the space programs and developed the technologies to enable everything that has been done so far. And now the commercial side is coming up, taking advantage of those technological advances and then furthering them and finding business cases to continue moving forward. So not at all unlike other industries like the airline industry, for example, or any other number of technology examples. Uh, this is a great time and I'm so happy happy to see that the commercial enterprises and the talented engineers and other people are actually making it happen. Former astronaut Leroy Chow there.